experiences and events are often at the core that shape who we are as a person and what we think. Often, they go unnoticed. Sometimes they are so insignificant that we give them no pause until one day something happens that connects all of these seemingly minuscule events into one really, really big realization. Today, I want to share with you a realization that I had. First, some background. I am a teacher. My heart is in special education. Right out of college, I thought I landed my dream role as a high school English teacher. I quickly realized that the class that I worked the hardest for, got the most frustrated with, but loved the most, was my class of struggling learners. In a moment of instant reflection, I realized that all of my previous educational experiences and jobs had been with at-risk populations, everything from youth groups to teaching in the prison system. So I left what my dream job was, and I got a job at a out-of-district placement for students with emotional and behavioral disorders. I was home, and this is when I truly fell in love with education and with teaching. I have been lucky enough to hold several roles in the field of special education in a lot of different settings. I have also been able to sit at the table with a lot of highly qualified, top of their field professionals. And when it comes to collaboration meetings and talking about a student's programming or what they need or their progress, I've had almost every single seat at the table you can have. So, Given my experience in special education, both professionally and personally, I know, I know a little bit about diverse learners, right? Well, here's my realization. What if the kid sitting at the table knows more than me? What if they know more than all of us? What if they know more than our degrees and our certifications and our trainings? What if they're not just the kid at the table, but the true expert? What do they know that we don't know? How often has a child or a student said something more true or honest than any adult? I'm not just talking about special education students or neurodiverse learners or learners with different abilities, but all students. I went to a meeting where we were talking about a student that was not doing well in school. Evaluations had shown a very splintered learning profile, so they they had significant weaknesses in attention and in several academic areas, but the same testing showed that they had some superior abilities in fluid reasoning and some above average abilities in other academic areas. But they were not doing well in the classroom. So the team looked at all these evaluations in the prior classroom performance, and the team decided that they were just checking out. They were not working to their potential. The student was currently in a class that was geared specifically for learners like them. It was a co-taught class, meaning that there were two certified teachers in the classroom, but there was also a paraprofessional for extra support. So given this setting, the students should be flourishing, not just academically in their own personal goals, but also in the general curriculum. But they weren't. So what was up? The student said that the class was too distracting, there was too much going on. They were getting frustrated and they were just shutting down. They wanted to change classes. The team believed that they knew better. They wanted to keep the schedule. I mean, we had years of experience, we had the data, we had the assessments, and why should we reward checking out by putting them in a class with their friends? Why should we reward all of the missing work by putting them in a class with their best friends? So we kept the schedule. At the next progress report meeting, when we had to discuss their continued academic decline, but also now their change in outward presentation, we again discussed what the student had brought up earlier, changing classes. I mean, the team was really out of ideas, so we decided to change classes. Um, we put them into a class with less adult support, but now there was this added distraction of social temptation. So would anyone like to guess how this ended? Um, the student did well. They flourished. Grades improved. Spirits improved. 
and they were succeeding at school. What did this student know that we didn't know? What did this student know more than a room full of professionals and diagnosticians? They knew themselves. We just needed to listen. For decades, individuals with differences have been advocating for themselves. We teach and encourage young kids to advocate for themselves and their independence. At the forefront of any special education meeting discussing any level of disability, we talk about how are we going to foster their independence? How are we going to foster their advocacy skills? I remember um, once when I was in public school as a special education teacher, I, I told my students, my job is to put myself out of a job. My job is to teach you all the skills and strategies that you need so that you don't need me anymore. And um, one young man was quite proud of himself when he was like, Mrs. Bergen, that is not good job security. <laughs> So here is what I'm sharing. Do not let degrees and accolades damper the exact voices of the population that we are trying to represent. We need to remember to listen to their voices. When I had this realization, I was humbled, I was a little embarrassed, and I felt like a hypocrite. I thought about the campers from Camp Jeanette. Camp Jeanette was a summer camp that ran from 1951 to 1977 in the Catskills of New York for individuals with disabilities. When campers went there, they did not have their everyday care providers, and they really learned to be independent. And they were experiencing freedoms that their typical peers felt every single day. They felt empowered. They felt valued. They felt smart, and they felt able. Yet when they went home, they were put into separate classrooms or isolated altogether. They no longer had those freedoms that they experienced before. So they spoke up, they advocated, and they were ignored. Judy Human, who was a camper from Camp Jeanette, when she graduated from college, she was denied a teaching license because she was considered a fire hazard, because she was in a wheelchair. But Judy believed in herself. She believed in her power to be heard. She, along with other campers from Jeanette and other community members, advocated. And ultimately, this led to greater rights under the American with Disabilities Act and what we know of as today as the Individuals with Disabilities Educational Act. Research has shown that a student that has a lower skill set but higher levels of self-efficacy has a greater overall life success trajectory than a student with a higher skill set but lower levels of self-efficacy. Think about that. At Southern New Hampshire University, our mission statement says, our success lies within the success of our students. We should focus equally on fostering self-efficacy skills as we do their skill set. For me, I'm doing my job, I'm doing my profession, but I'm also channeling my love for all the future learners and generations of learners, no matter what their brain chemistry is and no matter what their learning profile is. We need to pay attention to what students are saying. What would we do if we excuse those voices, we're going to miss out on a lot. What would this country currently look like if Judy Human didn't go to Camp Jeanette? I don't want to think about the trajectory of the student that I spoke about earlier, and not even just academically. We would have continued to keep them in a classroom where they struggled to be successful. How much further would they have withdrawn? What would it have done to their future voice? What would it have done to their self-efficacy? Instead, this experience reinforced their self-awareness and their belief in their voice. We gave power to their voice. We helped them become more self-efficacious. All we did, we just had to listen. In higher education, we are extremely lucky to be surrounded by thinkers and by professionals that are knowledgeable and passionate in their field. But we also have to make sure 
that we do not forget where we came from and who we're doing this all for. I wanted to share my discovery, not for the kid that was sitting at the table and not because I feel like we should focus on social, emotional, and academic self-efficacy. The student knew what they needed from the very beginning. We just needed to listen to them. Listen to all voices. No matter how silly or outrageous the idea or the voice may sound, listen to them. It may not be the right solution for the problem. It may not even be a feasible one. But it may be a voice that we want to encourage now because of what they're going to say in the future. Thank you. <laughs>